Hello everyone and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care Channel. I'm Dwayne and I'm a certified level two RV inspector. And today we're going to be talking about glamping versus camping. Now those two terms have a very broad application outside this uh, video, but for the purposes of this video, we'll identify glamping as, uh, you know, a person who enjoys the comforts that full hookups usually bring, and quite often that's going to be in a campground. Now we're go going to identify campers, on the other hand, as those who really don't want to be in, in campgrounds. They want to be out there in nature, uh, just enjoying the scenery, no hookups, you know, uh, boondocking essentially. So for the purpose of the video, that's the way we're going to identify those terms. Now the point is, whatever kind of RVer you are, and you know, just sort of try to identify where do you fall on that scale. And if you are a glamper, and that's pretty much like Sherry and I, we, we admit to that, we like our comforts, we enjoy our full hookups and so on. Well, just own that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a great way of RVing. On the other hand, if you're a camper and you're, you love boondocking and you just love being out there where nobody is and so on, then own that. That is your style of RVing. The point is that when you make that decision on where you fall, the purpose of this video is to help you understand that the more clearly you have that identified in your mind, the more you'll understand it will impact the decisions you make about the RV you choose, about the gear that you're going to get as you go along the way. It'll help you avoid getting into expensive things that you really don't need for the style of camping that you do. Now to get into that, let's start with glamping. Let's start with that. Um, you know, if you are a glamper, the size of your rig just doesn't really matter anymore. Um, that's because most commercial campgrounds can accommodate almost any size rig you want to throw at them. Of course, there's some that don't like uh, big rigs. They just don't have uh, the uh, resources for it. But that's not usual. Uh, it pretty much with campgrounds, it doesn't matter the size rig, the kind of rig, or any of those kind of things. So it frees you up to buy pretty much anything you want if you're going to be glamping. Now, if you're going to be on full hookups, then there are some things that you're going to hear a lot of talk about in the RV industry and on RV channels here on YouTube and so on. And honestly, you don't even need to really be thinking about these things. And one is solar power. If you're going to be hooked up to shore power with 120 volt electricity almost all the time, solar really is not necessary for you. I mean, if you just really want to have it, go ahead and install it, but you don't need it. Don't get caught up in those discussions about solar power and trying to learn all about it. That's kind of a waste of time for you. Uh, the other thing is generators are relegated um, from being very important on the priority list down to being essentially a backup of a backup system for you for power. And what I mean by that is this, uh, if you're in campgrounds, uh, every now and then the power goes out, right? Well, the next thing you go to as a backup is usually most RVs have an inverter that will allow them to take the 12 volt power in your batteries, you know, your house battery system, and convert that to 120 volt power and it'll run almost all of the appliances that you have in the RV on 120 volts. It just won't run big things like air conditioners. So it, that's the backup for not having shore power. So if you finally exhaust all of your battery power, yes, then you're going to need a generator. Uh, but as you can see, it's a backup of a backup. So it doesn't become quite so critical uh, when you're talking about uh, being a glamper in campgrounds. It's just not that big of a thing for you to focus on. The other thing you really don't need to focus a lot on is lithium batteries. Boy, do we hear the talk about that, right? I mean, there's just so much discussion about lithium batteries. In fact, I made a video about the kind of batteries that you can use in RVing and camping and so on. And here is that video that I made. And, and in the uh, 
uh, description below, I'll put a link to that video so you can follow that out. Uh, but the point is that lithium batteries are overkill for campgrounds. You know what? The good old fashioned lead acid battery does a great job for folks that are in campgrounds. Uh, they're cheap and inexpensive. They are tried and true. Uh, if you're only, you know, using them a little bit at a time, they're going to last for a long time for you. Uh, that big expensive lithium batteries is just not necessary. So don't get caught up in that hype, you know, that, oh, I got to have lithium batteries. If you're really in the campgrounds most of the time, you just don't need to worry about all that discussion. But here's something that you might be able to, to use, and that is a residential refrigerator. Uh, you know, residential fridges, they actually do perform better overall than RV refrigerators for cooling food. You'll find that they usually get food a little bit uh, cool, cooler or colder, uh, especially in the freezer section, and it'll be more stable. The temperature will stay more stable. It doesn't fluctuate as much as RV re refrigerators do. And uh, also, they're usually bigger. So you get all these advantages, and you know what? You're going to be on shore power most of the time anyway. Well, well you might say, well, hey, wait a minute. Uh, you know, what about traveling in between campgrounds? Well, the good news about residential refrigerators, they're well insulated, and uh, they can take being unplugged for several hours without any noticeable decrease in uh, coolness. So that's something you might want to consider. Um, the other thing that's great for those that are in campgrounds most of the time is slides. Get as many as you want. You're not, uh, you're not restricted here in any way. Uh, whatever you can get. Uh, it's, you can have a rolling apartment on wheels that uh, pull into a campground and set up and you're fine with that. Uh, so for uh, those that are in campgrounds with full hookups, don't worry about the number of slides. But here's the thing that you really should uh, think about and, and be concerned about if you're a glamper, as we're defining in this video. And that is you need to manage your campground costs and stays. Now, what I mean by that is this. If you spend all your time in campgrounds, that's going to get expensive, you know, if you just keep paying commercial prices all the time. So you need to manage that somehow. Uh, one very good way of doing that is to have memberships. Uh, Cherry and I use the Thousand Trails uh, program. We love it. We, it works really well for us. But you don't have to do that. There's others available. There's Resort Parks International, you know, RPI. There's Coast to Coast. Uh, others just like to use things like Passport America and get 50% uh, off on uh, tons of campgrounds, that kind of thing. So whatever you do, try to uh, manage campground costs if you're a glamper, because that's real important. Now, the second point about that is managing campground stays. This has just really kind of come up recently with the COVID pandemic this year. There's so many new RVers there that are coming into the system. You know, they, uh, they, they're going out and buying RVs and getting into campgrounds. And the problem with that is there's not a lot of new campgrounds being built. So campgrounds are getting overwhelmed. It's not easy to get reservations anymore, at least not uh, like it used to be. So to make sure you're going to have availability, uh, it would be good to have a membership because you have a little bit more chance of being able to get uh, campgrounds where you want to be and not have them just crowded out for you. So that's another thing to consider. Now, the last thing about uh, glamping is, you know, you see these videos about uh, folks that are out there by this creek uh, that's uh, in the middle of a wilderness, or they're out by a mountain uh, lake, uh, or they're out in the desert with the sun going down by the mesas and all of that. And man, does that look fantastic, doesn't it? Well, here's the reality. If you're a glamper, 
you're not going to be camping there. Uh, that's not where you're going to be. You will be in a campground close by, maybe. So accept that those things that you're seeing there will be day trips for you. Uh, that's not where you're going to spend your time camping. In fact, most of the time you're probably going to be in a campground. You may be side by side with other folks like this, as you can see here. Uh, so just accept that, that the reality is you're still going to be able to visit those places. You're just not going to be camping there. Now let's move on to the subject of camping and what to uh, expect about camping, what to focus on and what not to focus on. The first thing is, remember how with glampers, it doesn't matter what size rig you have, with boondockers and campers, you better watch the size of your rig, yeah. Um, the worst thing you can do is buy a big rig and try to take it out in a remote area. It's going to be tough. You can do it probably sometimes, but uh, it's not going to be your best choice. Try to keep your rig 30 feet or less, you know, for getting out in really remote areas. The other thing is keep your weight down. Uh, weight compounds so many other things. It's uh, like a domino effect. It's a snowballing effect that uh, the more weight you have, it affects something else, like, for instance, the size of your tow vehicle. And so things just keep getting bigger and bigger. The less weight you have, the better. Also, slides. Remember, uh, you know, slides add weight. Uh, so maybe you don't need quite so many slides if you're going to be out there camping. Uh, sometimes even not having slides at all is a great way to keep your weight down and uh, be able to get out in places that other people just can't go. Now when it comes to memberships, uh, you know like Thousand Trails and so on, forget about it. You don't need it. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying about that. Uh, you need to focus on uh, areas where you can get boondocking spots, not camping memberships. Maybe the only thing that might be beneficial for you would be Passport America. Uh, because sometimes traveling from one boondocking spot to another, you might need to overnight. And uh, maybe having Passport America account will you know, lower the costs of that. So that's something you could consider. Residential fridges? Uh-uh. No, no, this is not what they're for. Don't, don't be putting a residential fridge in a boondocking rig because uh, that's going to require way too much power uh, in most cases, at least. A residential fridge is not your friend there. An RV fridge is your friend when you're boondocking and camping out in the middle of nowhere because it can run on LP gas. Uh, some of them can even run on uh, 12 volt power off your batteries. These are great choices. Yes, uh, you know, RV fridges have their drawbacks in certain areas, but their flexibility cannot be challenged. They really can go a lot of places. There are two things you really want to focus on here uh, if you are going to be a camper. Number one, you need to focus on your power needs and the way you're going to provide that power. You're going to be out in the middle of nowhere, no hookups, no shore power. So if you have thousands of dollars to spend, and if you're going to keep that rig for a while, then you really should consider solar power. It's a fantastic choice. I made a video about it, and here you can see that. And once again, I'll put the link in the description below. It'd be a great way for you to visit that discussion. But uh, a lot of people cannot afford that. So if you can't afford uh, solar power to provide your needs out there, then generators are the secondary choice for most people. Once again, I made a video about inverter generators, very important needs to be an inverter generator. Uh, you can see that here, and again, you can visit that video and it goes into more detail. But the idea is you need to focus, if you're a camper, on these two things for providing power, one or the other. If it's a, a, uh, an inverter generator, then you need to really get a good one and make sure it fits your rig. Now, the other thing that you have to focus on as a uh, boondocker uh, is your management of water. 
big, big important thing. Uh, when you buy your RV, get the biggest holding tanks you can get. There's nothing more irritating than being out in this beautiful spot and having to break camp and go into town many miles away and dump your tanks and then go back. Uh, so the longer you can stay out there, the better. And the bigger tanks you have, the longer you can stay. You also need to learn techniques for uh, water management while you're boondocking. Now, I made a video again on this, and here it is. And once again, you can uh, take a look at the link in the description below, and it will uh, explain some of those techniques but I've got another great video coming up soon that'll go into some of the more advanced techniques for boondocking too so stay tuned for that as well now the last thing I want to mention about camping is you really got to focus on your camping spots that's the thing you really need to to focus on um, to find that, there are a couple of websites online that are really good. Campendium.com, excellent website for finding uh, boondocking spots and, you know, being away, remote areas. Another one is freecampsites.net, another great resource. Um, also, the National Park System has a lot of free boondocking camping. So, you know, get familiar with that. But here's a little point. You know what I've learned lately is the really good spots, you know, the choice primo spots are not necessarily going to be found online on those websites. They're often shared by the experts on boondocking in Facebook groups. So get on Facebook, join boondocking groups, and you'll probably get some really good ideas about where to go uh, for your rig that will work out well for you. Well, now having considered both glamping and camping, and the things you need to focus on for each one and the things you don't need to be focusing on for each one, what's the conclusion? Well, my conclusion would be this try to identify the kind of camper you are. If you're a glamper, like we are, own it. <laughs> you know, accept it. Then focus on the things that have to do with that style of RV camping. And don't get sidetracked by things that aren't really going to help you do that. If you are a camper or a boondocker, then own it. That's what you do. And get familiar with the things that are going to help you accomplish that. The other things that other people are doing, and probably the vast majority are doing campgrounds, well, don't worry about what they're doing. You've got to focus on what's going to work for your style of camping. Well, I hope that was helpful for you. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time.